Hi, this is a presentation of the uh, agent client collector for monitoring by ServiceNow. I will show you a, a demo of how you can actually configure it and actually run it and how you can actually see the metrics and um, see the events that it may generate. So first of all, we have an agent health dashboard. I can see here that I have four agents. One of them actually went into silent mode automatically because it probably used more than the 5% CPU that is uh, allocated to it. And that's configurable, of course. Uh, all my agents are of the same version. Uh, two of them are associated with a Linux mid, two of them with a Windows mid, and uh, two agents are running on Linux servers and two agents are running on the Windows server. So without further ado, let's look at the policies. Policies are actually a set of checks that will run against uh, a certain set of CIs. The first one, to make it simple, let's look at the Linux events. And this is a check. This is the policy actually, which is configured to run against all the Linux servers which are in operational uh, status uh, of operational. Um, the, there are actually many checks, uh, seven of them here. And each one of them actually is configured to uh, do a particular kind of things. It, some of them uh, check the CPU, other the memory, the disk, etc. So, and this one in particular uh, will just check the CPU and will generate a warning event if it, the CPU is more than 50% and a critical event if it's more than 90%. Just FYI, let's run it to see what kind of uh, data it returns. Let's run it against um, this server. And I can, it returns, as you can see, the it's 99% idle, so there won't be any alarm here. Now, let's, for practical purposes, let's start a stress test on that server. Remember, it's a DAT142 here, right? And so let's start this server and we'll see what happens later. All right, now let's look at another policy, which is uh, Linux, let's say Linux metrics, right? So this Linux matrix um, is also configured to run on all the Linux servers in operational mode. And there are many of them, uh, again, reporting metrics on memory, disk, CPU, um, the virtual memory, process status, etc. But let's look at a very simple one, CPU, right? So this one actually will return a metric. So obviously there's no threshold or any kind. So I'm going to run it against one of my Linux servers. And in this particular case, it's going to return a set of metrics. As you can see, all the CPU metrics. All right, so very straightforward. Now let's look at another policy, which would be against the uh, Microsoft SQL Server. So let's say it's MSSQL. And let's look at the metrics as well. In this particular case, I have only one check. This check, let's run it and see what it does. Uh, so let's run the test check. It knows because when the agent started, it actually did a basic discovery, which looked at all the processes and inferred which application are actually running. So it discovered um, as a result that there is a, a Microsoft SQL instance on this server. So let's select it. And if we run that check, it will return a certain set of uh, Microsoft SQL server metrics. Here it is. All right. Now, let's pick another one which is a little bit different. This could be the MySQL. It's a little bit different, and you're going to see why. Let's look at the MySQL matrix here. And again, it applies to all the MySQL instances. There is many metrics here. But if I pick up, let's say, this one here, here it is actually going to, again, prompt me for the MySQL instances that it discovered. And it automatically uh, enters the credentials here. So when I run the test, it's going to actually log into MySQL and find out that there is 
it's going to return the metric uh, associated with that uh, with that check. Now, why did it enter a credentials? And that's because the policy is actually um, defining a set of credentials. Because as you know, if you log into a Linux server or a, a Microsoft server with MySQL on it, uh, you need the username and password to log into the MySQL instance, right? So in this particular case, you do have to pass credentials to the agent to be able to log into that uh, CI. Right? Now let's look at another policy, which has to do with uh, monitoring the uh, Apache log files on CentOS. So here, that policy again applies to all the Linux servers, right? And it, but as you can see, not only do I look at the Linux servers which are operational, but also I specified a particular IP address. The way you do this is that you can go into the sandbox and configure the, a filter uh, based on all the uh, attributes of that CI. Now, if I go into testing this check here, so what is it going to do? It's going to, uh, actually, let me get back a bit what does this um, check do it's actually looking for patterns in this log file either of severe exception or 404 in this log file here so let's run it my website is uh, my web ser server is running so let, it should return no errors right now because okay th so there's no errors uh, so it's not reporting any event or warning or critical severity. So let me go to that website and type in an invalid URL. So if I go back here and run this check against the same instance, at that point, I should get a warning, right? Because it had it found a 404 once, right? So you will get an event uh, of a warning severity in uh, operator workspace. Let's look at yet another policy, monitoring the HTTP endpoints. This particular case, let's look at the HTTP endpoint metrics. So there's only one check and if you look at the policy, it goes against all the HTTP entry points. And I specified just two IP addresses. Again, you can specify any filter, whether it's by name or by location or any attribute associated with that CI. And then you need to specify the proxy setting, right? Because if you test a, um, a website, there is no point in testing it from the server on which the website is running, right? Um, so you want to run it from some other agent. So that's why you specify the proxy setting. Scheduling, it runs every 60 seconds. And here you don't specify any credentials because you're accessing a website, so there is no uh, credentials needed. But if, you, if it were an API endpoint where you would need to log in, you would specify the set of credentials here. So let's run this check quickly. Here it is going against my HTTP entry point. It's prompting me for to define uh, an, a proxy. So let me take, pick up this Windows machine, for example, and no credentials. So uh, let's run it right away. And here it is. Here is a total time, uh, total latency to access this website and some other metrics here as well. All right. So let's do one more. Let's look at the SNMP checks, for example. So let's do a SNMP status using Linux. Well, um, the reason why it's Linux is because I installed, for the purpose of this demo, I installed an SNMP agent on the Linux server, which is why I called it that way. And here, again, it is an SNMP agent that goes against a specific object identifier and will um, will create an event if uh, if it the value is not zero, right? So 
let's run it again here it prompt me for the instance where I discovered an SNMP agent. It is prompting me for an SNMP agent here. So let's do um, this one. In terms of credentials, I got a couple of them. So actually this is the one I want to use. And this, which is the SNMP community string that I needs to be passed to be able to connect to the SNMP agent. And yes, uh, all is well. So I will not be getting an alert. Now, just like for monitoring the website, uh, monitoring uh, an SNMP uh, device which cannot have an agent installed on it, you need to also to specify the proxy settings, right? So in this particular case, this policy will apply to this uh, IP. So it could be a, a, a router or a, a switch or any, any SNMP device. Uh, you specify where you want to test this um, SNMP device from, and you need to specify the community string because it's a, an SNMP device. All right. So I think that summarizes basically what um, what I wanted to show you. Now, okay, you remember that I started a stress test on the server that 142 uh, to increase the CPU. So it's been running for a while, and as a result, as you know, that CPU was 100%. So what? would we expect? Obviously, we would expect a critical alert on that service. Now, if we visualize that service, it, especially the service map, we can see that that 142 server has the critical alert. Uh, if we go into the details of that service, we can see that there is one related alert, which has to do with CPU uh, critical. So let's go into this alert itself. And let's look at the details. I can see that it is the CPU 89% user, 10% idle, etc. And um, see, th this is the explanation of the alert. And if I look at the metrics on that CI, it will give me additional metrics such as the load, and you can see the spike uh, as a result of the stress test. So this illustrates how you can actually visualize the alerts in operator workspace which are triggered by an event from the agent cloud collector for monitoring now let's see how we can visualize these metrics as well in inside explorer this is the uh, cpu the uh, load average uh, five on that server and you can see that i ran of several stress tests actually this one i, I stopped it partially uh, and then restarted it so you can see now it stopped and so the load average starts going down. But this shows you how uh, the CPU actually goes out of bound as a result of the automatic bound, which is calculated as part of its anomaly detection. So this illustrates uh, for you how the agent cloud collector works. Um, it starts with an agent health dashboard. And I showed you the various policies that you can configure in um, having to do with Apache, Apache logs, Apache itself, Docker, F5, HTTP entry points, IIS, JBox, Linux, Windows, MSSQL, Oracle, MySQL, uh, Ping, of course, uh, that goes without saying, Tomcat, uh, WebSphere, uh, etc. So there's more and more uh, checks coming up in every release uh, on, the, on the store. And on that positive note, uh, thank you for your time.